deal. Don't take anything that's not yours. Have you ever taken anything that's not yours? Yeah, Paper clips, tank, candy bar. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And what do they call people who take things that don't belong? Thieves. Thieves, very good. Third commandment says we're not to commit blasphemy. We take God's holy name, we use like a quarter to fill for it. You know, JC or GD, do anger. You ever done that? Very careful with that one. See, in the Bible, it's very oh. clear. It says God will not hold that person guiltless. Think about it. It's his name. Right? It doesn't like his name being thrown around as a swear word. I'm going to use you. You have a mom? I have a mom. You love your mom? No. <laughs> I love my mom. All right, watch. How would you like it if every time I was with your mom and you, I used your mother's name as a swear word? Yeah, I mean, you, you wouldn't like that, right? So then why do you want to do it to God? I mean, what horrible thing that he did to us that we don't want to use him as this square work? And the fact that you're here is because he allowed us to be created. That's how we got here. You get married, you have children. I mean, that's because of his, that's everything he's done with the reproduction. And we use God's name as a square word. The one that gets me is when I meet atheists who don't believe in God, and they tell me they swear. I say, why would you swear using the name of someone you don't believe in? Think about how crazy that is. Yeah. One more we're done. The seventh commandment says you're not to commit adultery. But before you answer, Jesus said if you just look at another person and you have lust after them, sexual desire, he said, you've already committed adultery with them in your heart. So have you ever looked at another person with lust? Probably. Is that a yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes? All right. So, what's your first name? Alex. Alex? Yeah. Hi, Alex. I'm Tommy. You're... Anita. Anita, very pretty. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, look at your own admission. You're a bunch of lying thieves, you're blasphemers and adulterers at heart. That doesn't sound like a good person, does it, right? Think about that. So, here's the, part, here's the next tough question. What if some drunk jumps the curb right now, kills us, and now you're facing a holy gun right now? How do you think he would find you based on those commandments? You know, like, or there's six more to go. You think he'd be innocent or guilty? What do you think? He'd be like in the middle. Yeah, there is no middle. There's a, there's a religion that teaches that Catholicism. They say it's purgatory, but it doesn't exist. It's a lie that they're told all those people. Innocent or guilty, that's all there is. What would you think? Innocent or guilty. In God's eyes, you've broken the law. And remember, I was kind. I only, <laughs> I only asked you had you ever lied. I didn't ask you how many times during your lifetime you lied or stolen or sworn. You get it? So I was being very kind the only thing did you ever. So think of all the times you've done it. You're facing the Holy God. Mom, be honest. Would you be innocent or guilty in his eyes? Overall innocent. Excuse me? Overall innocent. Okay. If I had to Overall you would be innocent. So yeah. you think God would say, hey, I'm glad you're a liar. I'm glad you steal things. And be, hey, you know, Maybe keep, I lied about a keep bar, swearing like, using my... Work, what happened? Maybe I lied about a candy bar, like what time I Well, you see, look, the value of what you take doesn't matter. See, when you take a thousand dollars or one dollar, it doesn't matter. You think something that's not yours. And he says, do not... Steal. It doesn't say you don't take things that are valuable. Well, I'll be honest. How about in your case? You can agree with that? You think in a lawbreaker would be how about in the court of law? What what if we broke the law here? We broke some of the man's law and you're in front of the judge. The evidence would be there. I can say to the judge, well, you know, most of the things I've done are okay and yeah, I've done this and that, but that's okay, you know, you right. but God you is do? a forgiving God. So now we have God as your so why would he be forgiving unless you said you actually were guilty in the first place? If you repent for your sins, he will forgive you. Okay, that's what you've heard. Right. Right. Can we try that in the court of law? Watch. No. But Remember it's that in the Bible. Bible. No, well, yeah, but then you, that's not going to save you. Listen, like her situation, her, her, her mom or your mom, I, so I did a horrible. Repent for your sins. Hold on. You know, the hor you. Hold on. That's not going to. Listen, you tell me. A horrible crime. I then say to the judge, I'm sorry, forgive me. I'm going to repent of it. I'm never going to do it again. I know I did a horrible thing, but I'm not going to do it again. So I know you're a good judge, so just let me go. Would he let you go? I did a horrible crime. No, he's not going to let me go. Well, then how could a holy God, see a righteous God, a just God, do any less? That's what people have been told, think they can get away with it, as long as they say you're sorry, or forgive me, and they go back and do it again. Why don't you get the connection there? So, if you broke the law, would you be in the city of Come on, be honest. See, it's your interpretation of the, of the Bible. No, I'm not so, even using the Bible. I'm going to use God's Ten Commandments. That the Bible is just four little commandments. It says, you should not lie. And you tell me you've lied. Right. 
So, not my opinion, that's his, and you broke his law, and you're going to tell me it depends? He also says he's a forgiving God, too. Jesus Christ says he's a forgiving God. How about if there's a wrath of God is upon you, it says? Is that a God you've ever heard about? Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Okay, let's just say, like, your girlfriend, like, she looked really bad in the dress. She's like, I look good in this dress. You have to say yes. You don't want to hurt feelings, right? That's a lie. I hear that a lot. I'm glad you brought that one up about looking good in the dress. Guess what? The dress was done. Watch. You are saying, God, I don't respect you. I respect you tell anything. Your girlfriend, my turn now. Like my turn. Watch. You're saying I respect my friend more, another human, versus you. You told me not to lie, but I'm going to lie to my friend so she feels better and will like me more. See, but you don't mind offending a holy God. Perfect example. You brought it up. I was at a church, mega church in Scottsdale. And the pastor did that exact same message. It had to be about husbands and wives. He said, man, you got to be careful with this question with your wife. How do I look in this dress? Okay? He says, you don't want to get in trouble, so be careful what you say. Just tell her how much you love her. Well, my wife turned to me and said, I'm glad you're not like him. Because you would have told me the truth. If you didn't like it, you would have told me. You now that's the way we're supposed to be. Because watch, can I have an opinion that I don't like what you're wearing and still love each other? Come on. And if she liked it, could she still not wear it? Right? Come on, let's look at that. But to lie to her and use the exotic excuse, that's horrible. Think about that. That's the saying to God, you're not important. This is more special. Look, let's be honest. Look, if you broke God's law, you'd have to be guilty. Be honest. And if you were guilty, right. where would God have to send you? Heaven or hell? Uh, now be honest. God, where would he have to send someone who's guilty? You would go to heaven. That's what oh. it says in the Bible. That's not so all of what it says in the Bible. Commandments, watch. If you're going to say the Ten Commandments, which are in the Bible, yeah. you also have to take the rest of the Bible too. Absolutely. I'm right. agreeing with you. Right. That's why so, we've used the Ten Because you know what I find? Most people who tell me they know the Bible right. don't know the Ten Commandments. Right. You mean right. Yeah, see, I've asked them. Can That's you name true. them? And they get I three. I can't name all of them. No. See, now how come? Now watch this, and then watch, then how do you know what laws you're breaking if you don't know what they are? They said, why would you ask for forgiveness or repent of something that you don't think is okay? You know how many people tell me lying is okay? Just what you said, you don't want to offend your friend. How about stealing? I've had people come out, hey, it's okay to steal, it's because if I need something, God's not going to be upset with me. Look at all these rich people, they don't need to have a I could do Wow. Yeah, they justify their own lifestyle. No, here, let me make it simple for you then, so you can really get the truth in it. Very simple. It's in John 3, 16. It says, If God so loved the world, that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross, he paid the fine for the crimes that Tom committed. See, not me asking for forgiveness and repentance. It's what he did that saved me, not what I say that saves me. I hope you understand that, the big difference. Because if I keep saying it's, I do this or I do that, I repent it, well, then it's all on me. Then why did he die in the first place? Hey, it's foolish. God sent his son to get punished. Think about it. He was brutally beaten for a scumbag like me for all the laws I broke. But once I understood I was headed for hell, because that's the destination God would have to send us to, this loving God that you people make up. Think about it, see? He doesn't exist. Sure, he's a loving God, but he's also a righteous God. He's a just God. Get it? He can't be the presence of anybody who's not. And the only way it happens is we have to now, what? Repent and trust what Jesus Christ did that saved me. Not me just speaking the words. And once that happens, he says, your sins are wiped clean. The past and the present, like they never happened. That's awesome, man. They, now you're going to be adopted into the kingdom. You get the Holy Spirit that transforms you. You become a new creation. That's the only way you can become repentant. Because most people say, I repent, and what do they do? They go back and do it again. You got it? Remember, Jesus said to that then, they give me their lip service. They worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's what you guys got to be careful of. That's what I'm hearing from the both of you. Okay? You're making up your own God. It's no big deal. He's not going to let. It's okay. Well, we do. You already got this. I'm sorry. Wrong. This is why you get the glow stick, because you didn't pass the test, right? You didn't pass. True? We didn't pass. Not a good person. Nobody is. If you believe what you believe, Jesus said what? Not one of us is good. No, not one. Only God in heaven is good. There was a rich young ruler came to him and said, Good master, what do I got to do to get into heaven? And Jesus said, 
why do you call me good? There's none good. But God in heaven. So we should understand that. None of us can claim to be a good person. But there's a great verse in the scriptures. It's Ephesians 2, 8, 9. It's by grace you can say. It's a gift from God. Not of works. So that no man can boast. See the difference? It's a gift from God. Not what you do. What he has done for us. Once your eyes get open to that, now repentance makes sense. Because in the Bible it's clear, in 2 Corinthians 7, 10, it says, God's sorrow produces the repentance that leads to salvation. Think about that combination. Here I'm offering you a glow stick, showing you how you got saved. And when Jesus died on the cross, pretty paltry example of comparison. I do this so I can get people's attention like I got yours. No, it's good. It's you good listen. It. I hope you got something yeah, out of it. More so than you may be heard before. Yeah. And apply that and that's good what you're doing. Yeah. I'm glad you liked it. So you have a Bible at home? You need to read it and read it. Obey what it said. Alright. See a lot of I had a guy tell me right before you guys. He said, I I read the Bible. I says, Great, then you know what it said. You could have he said I said I read it. It doesn't mean I understand it. <laughs> See how, how they are? Tricky with that thing? Yeah. So all you got to do is reach up, take a glow stick, all right. get two of them. And here, I want you to take this as well. See, are you good enough to get into heaven? All right. Read that. I got my webpage on it. Got any questions, comments? Because you, you guys are on the internet. Thank you. You got the iPhone. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for listening. God bless you, ladies. Ah. 45. 11.